Good morning, good morning. Welcome. Welcome to our Manifest Your Daily podcast, you guys. I am so happy to be here. How are you this morning? How are you? Drop a good morning in the chat. And you know what? If you aren't doing good, you can you can let us know, sis. You don't have to be doing good every single day. Look, you are here. That's what's important. Right? You showed up. That's what's important. That's all you got to do. Sometimes all you got to do is show up and God is going to do the rest. How many know what I'm talking about this morning? How many of you know what I'm talking about this morning? Oh, y'all, welcome once again. This is our Manifesto Daily Podcast. This is a representation of our wider community and our community, of course, Manifesto Daily. It's not just a journal. It's not just events that we do it is a sisterhood and it is a sacred and safe space that God has given us I'm grateful for it are you grateful for it this morning I am so grateful for it my name is Erin Marie and I am also known as your purpose partner your manifester mentor and your breakthrough bestie and we are coming through because manifester daily is the place where we keep Christ in the center because that's the best way to show up every single day. So we are intentional about this study and this practice. And the best thing about it is that it just gets sweeter and sweeter over time. It is so sweet. It's so good when we are together. This past weekend was our Renew Retreat. And it was the last one of its kind. It was the last one of its kind. And God had impressed on my heart to just do our big renew retreat at the end of next year and not to do these smaller ones. So I don't know what it is, but God just seems like he saves the best for last because it was so sweet. It was all of them have been wonderful, but this one was just so sweet. So y'all, it is my birthday month. We'll get into it a little bit. I I can't get ahead of myself. It's my birthday month. And I just want to tell you that we are celebrating all month. I'm giving away free new Manifestor Daily merch, beautiful colors. Check my Instagram stories at BWF woman. I'm going to add some to at Manifestor Daily as well. So you can see some of the first looks because we had some first looks at this merch at the retreat this past weekend and the colors. Can somebody say the colors? The colors in the chat. Can you say that girl? Let me tell you the teal. I think the teal is my favorite. So we gave away three on Saturday. Everyone joined me uh, in our Facebook group. So if you didn't see it, go ahead and check it out in our Facebook group. We had three winners. And just in case, because I haven't heard from everybody yet, those were Ramona Wilson, Latasha Nunn, and Gail Hill. So if you haven't reached out to me with your address, go ahead and do so so I can send you this shirt, sis. They look amazing. So we are giving away this free merch, and we will be giving away the 170-card affirmation deck as well. We're calling it the Legacy Set. These are all of the affirmations that I have written, and I call them manifestation cards. So you can get that entire set as well. I just want to thank you to our Manifestor members, our MHD Society members, our Purpose Manifestors. Thank you so much for supporting this ministry. The work that you are doing is making differences in women's lives around the world, and we don't take that for granted. I don't take that for granted at all. Because I know that when I needed somebody to reach in and give me a word, there were times where I didn't have anywhere to turn. There weren't women like we have in this community where we could reach out and literally call multiple people and get the God answer. Not my opinion, not what I think you should do, girl, but the God answer, like based on the word of God. So totally grateful for that. Thank you for your sacrifice it means something here. All right. Just in case you didn't know, now you know, sis. It means something here. So we are wrapping up season four. This is the second to the last episode of this year, y'all. Can you believe it? We are in our Manifesto Daily Journal like we've been all year, and we are on page 203. So let's go ahead on and roll up in here. Do y'all already know? Did you look ahead? Do you know what we're talking about today? 
So we have 52 devotionals in here, and this is our devotional for this week. It is entitled Asking God for More. Asking God for More. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, walk with us. Talk with us, Jesus. Tell us about your will and your vision. Father God, tell us about your original plan, your original design for us. God, as we saturate ourselves intentionally in your word, break every chain, God. Cause us to hear you and see you on different levels. Lord, enlighten our spirit. And we give you the glory and the praise. Bless this message today. Bless my sister. Let her know that she is loved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Somebody say amen. So as I was mentioning, y'all, we finished our last Renew Retreat of the year, the last Renew Retreat of its kind, even this past weekend, my, my team and I flew up on Wednesday and on Thursday, as soon as the ladies got off their planes, we were at the airport, we picked them up and we were gone, y'all. I told them, get ready to ride, get ready to ride. We're doing this Renew Retreat differently. So we went on this beautiful wine tour of Hill Country out in Austin. We had a little barbecue, some authentic Texas barbecue, and we just started getting to know each other again, right? And that's the beautiful thing about this community. When we gather together, it's amazing. Something that I couldn't show you on my Instagram stories because I don't film in the spaces where we have our morning miracle meditation until after it's over, but what I can't show you is part of the most beautiful part of the Renew Retreat, and it's our live morning miracle meditation. On the last day of this time together, which was yesterday for me, on the last day, as we were sitting there praising God, just saturated in his word, we I had read the word, I had told everyone what God had put on my heart. And I was wrapping it up and I was like, all right, y'all. So, and in that moment, God arrested my spirit. The Holy Spirit stopped me in that moment. And a song came on and I have to drop it in the chat, y'all. Actually, hold on. Let me just, can I take a second and tell you, if you have not listened to this song right here, I actually made a Renew Retreat 2023 Austin playlist and added it to it for the ladies who were there but there is a song called design and it's by upper room as soon as I said so the last song in the playlist ended and this song began and if you listen to this song you'll know because this the song the singer just sings holy beautiful glorious, matchless in every way. And she sings it over and over and over again. Beautiful, glorious, matchless in every way. And God gave me this word, an extra word, after we listened to that song. And he said, I want you to tell them that I'm walking amongst them right now. And I want you to tell them that I'm lifting every heavy burden. And I want you to tell them that my train is filling this temple because how many of you know that church is not a physical place, but church is a place that is within us. When we gather together, we are the church. So it doesn't matter if we're in a basement. It doesn't matter if we're outside in a field. It doesn't matter if we're in a cathedral. It doesn't matter if we are in a restaurant, wherever we gather together, we have church. All right. Did you know we have we can have some church somewhere now, y'all. We can have church. And he said, I want you to tell them that my train is filling the temple. And as I saw, because I see it when he says it. Right. And as I saw it, I saw just this beautiful, long, like satin train, just all of these colors just intertwined. Because when we do our morning miracle meditation, we sit on the floor on yoga mats. And we are comfortable because, you know, you might want to lay down. You might want to bend over. You might want to get on your hands and knees and just praise God, right? So we make it really easy for you to move around. And so I saw his train just 
just filling the temple. But the Holy Spirit said, it's not just that, it's trailing behind me. He said, it's filling the temple. It's filling it from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top. It's filling this entire space. And he said, as it does, he said, I'm lifting the burdens. I'm lifting the heavy weights. And I'm so grateful to God because he knows what we need. He understands the desires of our hearts. And he provides for them in such beautiful and miraculous ways. There were, se- there were several people, and I would dare say everyone who was in that morning miracle meditation who had a heavy weight that was lifted. But you don't have to be at a renewal retreat to have a heavy weight to be lifted. All you need to do is to be in his presence. And sometimes, yes, you got to gather with your sisters so that you can be in that place. Like sometimes you need a little help. And that's what we're here for. But God is so good because he didn't have to do it. How many of you know he didn't have to do what he did for us, but he did it anyway. So as we wrap up this year and we're talking about this topic of asking God for more, asking God for more. I have not looked ahead to see what our power word was yet. So let me try this. Oh, yeah. Ask, ask. The power of asking, the power of asking. So if you have a heavy burden this morning, I want you to know all you have to do is ask. If your mind is a little weighted down by something that just happened, sis, let me tell you, you can ask God for more. If you feel like you're blessed, maybe you feel like you're so blessed that you don't need anything else. God still expects for us to ask for more like a good, good father. He knows that. He wants to have this heart towards us and he has this heart towards us and he wants us to recognize that. And the way that we affirm God's heart towards us is by trusting him. And you only ask people who you trust for something. So it's a confirmation of the trust when you ask. It's a saying that I know that God is going to hear me. It's a belief that I understand that he is my good father. It's a trust, y'all, the trust factor. I feel like that's been the theme of this year, the trust factor. I want to ask God for more because I trust God that he is going to do something for me that I didn't anticipate. And when we were sitting in that room, we were in a basement of sorts. But when I tell you, it felt like the upper room. Because the Bible says when he pours out his spirit on them, and he did this in the upper room, he poured out his spirit on them, and they begin to dream dreams and see visions and all of these things that come along with having the Holy Spirit's presence in your life. We can ask God for more. We can ask him for more of it. So your your ideal state is not to walk around in pain, amen? Your ideal state is not to walk around in sorrow and sadness. My ideal state is not to be angry all the time. I am human. You are human. So, yes, we encounter those emotions. We don't stay there, though. That's the difference. We encounter those emotions, but we don't stay there. And the reason why we don't stay there is because we regularly and intentionally have this thing called a love encounter with God. And when we have a love encounter with God, we get to know him a little bit better. That's what the theme has been. That's what we do in this community. We keep Christ in the center. I can't keep him in the center without knowing him. I can't get that close to him without feeling his presence. I can't know God and be distant. I got to be close to keep him in the center. And when he's in the center, everything else is displaced. When he's in the center... Everything else is moved to the outer edge. It makes it so it's easy for me to make the decision to follow. It makes it so it's easy for me to ask him for more. Because when he's in the center, my total perspective, no matter where I'm standing on the outskirts of that circle, my perspective when I'm facing inward, when I'm facing the center, is God, is Christ. And that's the best perspective to have. So we're going to talk about it this morning with our asking God for more. We're kind of picking up where we left off, but I'm in the book of John and I want you to turn to John chapter two, John chapter two, 
this is Jesus's very first miracle. Okay, so Jesus's first miracle, as you all know, was turning water to wine. So I'm going to go ahead and read John chapter two. I'm going to go ahead and start at, let's see, verse two. And Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding as well. When the wine ran out, Jesus's mother told him they don't have any wine. What has this concern of yours to do with me, woman? Jesus asked. My hour has not yet come. Jesus was like, I'm about my father's business. My hour is not yet here. His mother said, do whatever he tells you. She told the servants. Now six stone water jars had been set there for Jewish purification. Both each contained 20 or 30 gallons. So these were really big jars. Fill the jars with water, Jesus told them. So they filled them to the brim. Then he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the head waiter. And they did. When the head waiter tasted the water after it had become wine, he did not know where it came from. Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, he called the groom and told him, everyone sets out the fine wine first. Then after people are drunk, the inferior, but you have kept the fine wine. Until now. You've kept the fine wine until now. That's what he told him. So basically a lot of things were happening in the story. Jesus and his disciples along with it looks like his family maybe at least his mother were at a wedding. At the wedding they're responsible for having this party and these weddings would be days long right. So it takes a lot of planning. But unfortunately they ran out of wine and his mother knew that Jesus had a calling. So she asked him for more. His mother knew Jesus, so she asked him for more. Y'all remember, track back to last week if you forgot for a moment. But again, we're asking God because we trust him, and we can't trust him until we know him. And I can't know him until I get close to him. So his mother had done all of those things. She had been close to Jesus, right? She was close to him. And as a result, she knew him. And because she knew him, she trusted him, and she asked him for more. She asked him for more wine. And even though Jesus says my hour has not come, he still performed this miracle because his expectation of us is to ask him not to go fix it, not to go solve it, not to try to take a valid need, a valid need and fill it in an invalid way. As many of us have seen in our lives, as many of us have been tempted to do because you can have a valid need, but you can go fill it in an invalid way. You can have the need to want to be in a relationship, but you can go pursue relationships that weren't meant to you. You're filling that need in an invalid way. You can have the need to want to make love, right? Want to be sexual. You're a sexual being. God created you that way. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you're not married, and if you're not married, go out and try to fill that need in an invalid way. We've all been there, all right? Almost all of us have been there. Almost all of us have done that. So there's no judgment here. But what Jesus wants us to do is to ask him to fill the gap. So where you feel the tension of the issue, of the lack, of the thing that you wish you had that you don't have right now. Jesus says, I have an expectation of you. I want you to come to me. Because when you come to me, he said, I have the living water. I have everything that you need. Whatever you need is fulfilled in this moment by me, he said. But if you don't ask me, you don't receive the filling. And many of us don't know that we can ask God. We don't trust that we can ask God. We don't believe that we can ask God. We don't go the distance. And so what I'm asking for you today, everyone especially, who is a part of this community, who professes Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm asking you to orient your life around Jesus because you can't get close to him and trust him without having him in the center. You just can't, sis. So these invalid needs, these these valid needs, rather, being filled in invalid ways are keeping you from the miracles that God wants to perform in your life. It's only when we have him in the right position and we're allowing him to fill the gap. We're allowing him to fill the space. 
We're allowing him to to make sure the need is met, which requires patience. It requires us to take a deep breath sometimes. It requires us to breathe through it because your your flesh is warring with your spirit, the Bible says. And it wants to go over here, but your spirit wants to go over here. And you can't be in two places at one time. And this division is the opposite of the unity that God has for us as sisters. As a family, as a body of Christ, this division is what the enemy wants. Because he knows that all he has to do is distract you enough to put enough distraction in your way so that you can't see that Jesus is standing right in front of you. And so that as you have this need that's in your heart and in your hands, that you instead of walking towards Jesus, you walk towards the world. And you walk towards the world solution and you say, well, it's okay. God understands my heart. Yes, he does. He does understand your heart and he has asked for you to be obedient. He understands and he wants you to honor him in all of your ways. He understands and he wants that all that that he wants for everything that we do to give him the glory. He wants all of this for us. But we can't get there unless we ask. So Jesus solved this problem, this problem of this water and wine, because there was no more wine left. So he had to come up with a solution. And as a result, the disciples believed. And isn't that why Jesus does the majority of the miracles that he does in the New Testament? It was always to help us to believe. Because once I start believing Jesus, I'm able to get closer to him. And as I get closer to him, I trust him. And as I trust him, I start asking. And then when I ask, all of those valid needs, those valid gaps that I have, those those things that I have as a heart's desire of mine are able to be filled just simply because he is the answer. And he's the one with the living water. So Jesus solved the problem. And he did it without the steps that are typically necessary for making wine. We did our little wine tour out in Austin this past weekend. And I will tell you, you know, the the grapes go through a lot of things. I did a little research on it. The grapes have to first be gathered. Then they have to be crushed. Then there's this process where they clarify the grape juice, right, after it's been fermented. And then they have to age it. So there's a lot of things in this process, and we've been talking about the process. Some of you may recognize other processes we've talked about over the course of this year. There's a process for the grapes. But as we talk about being wealthy, and as we talk about walking into this wealth, I just want you to know that, yes, while God has his processes for you, sometimes, sometimes, through his great grace and mercy, he performs miracles in your life he performs divine manifestations of his will and of his purpose he shows up in the midst of a problem and he decides I'm going to go ahead on and fix this for them he shows up in the midst of issues that's where Jesus was he wasn't in a safe and comfortable place he was out there in the mess of the world right he was in the mess. He wasn't in the, the place where you get to be coddled and held. He was in the midst of the people. And how many of you know people can be messy? People can be real messy. It's messy when you work with people, right? Because you got to deal with a lot of things from the buildup of the trauma and the issues and the past and the things that we've gone through and the, the reasons why our minds need to be changed. By the word, right? By the washing of the water of the word, our minds are changed. So it's a little messy out here. But he he shows it to us because that's what we're supposed to do. And when we do it, it causes people to believe. So Jesus, he performed this miracle because he wanted the people to believe. So my question for you today is what can he do in your life that doesn't follow the typical process, that doesn't follow the typical pattern? but instead disrupts the entire situation as he was so good at doing in the word and and good at doing right now. He disrupts the entire process and he creates wine out of water. There was no picking of the grapes. There was no crushing of the grapes. 
There was no fermenting of the wine. There was no clarification process. There was no aging. He did a suddenly work. How many of you need a suddenly work? Y'all better talk to me. How many of you need a suddenly work? Because, see, a lot of times we are expecting to do things a certain way. We have a plan, right? All my type A's out there, y'all know who you are. We have a plan. We want to see this happen and then that happen and then that happen. And by the time I'm 30, I need to be married. And then by the time I'm 35, I need to have two kids. And then by the time I'm 60, I'll be retired. Or you're saying by the time I'm 40, I definitely will have traveled all the places. Our lives sometimes when I look at them are so me oriented. It's so me oriented. It's it's a plan that we put together. And if we're not careful, we are in the center of it. But Jesus said, I'm disrupting your whole plan today. This is a word for somebody today who had a plan and you're seeing that it's not quite working out the way that you thought it would. He said, I'm disrupting your whole plan. He said, and I'm going to do something better than what you had expected. He said, in fact, I'm not even going to follow the steps that they told you had to be followed to get you from point A to point B. He said, I'm going to do a new thing, a thing that is in the unseen realm. You aren't even going to see it happening and you aren't even going to understand it. But that's what happens. He's the God who gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. He's the God who works at ways that are higher than our own. And so we, he, he, he did something unexpected in the middle of the expected. See, the, the bridegroom was expected to provide wine. He was expected to provide wine from the, the beginning of the party to the end of the party. There was supposed to be wine flowing to the point where we know from reading the scripture that people were supposed to be inebriated, right? They were, they were a little lit. All right. They were, they were supposed to be a little lit. That's what was supposed to be happening up in the scripture. That's how much wine there was supposed to be. And these people drank all the time. So I'm I'm sure they had a good alcohol tolerance. Not like some of us, you take a, a sip, a half a sip, a half a glass and you you're knocked out for the rest of the night these people were they were expected to do this and they were expecting the bridegroom to do something but he couldn't do it so Jesus steps in and he fulfills what was expected with the unexpected he steps into the midst of the situation and he he disrupts the entire thing because these people were supposed to run out of wine. He does something completely unexpected. He takes the water and he turns it into wine and he doesn't even do it in the way that people were used to seeing it. He does it in a way that they had never seen before. And when they they saw it, they couldn't even question it because it happened before their eyes. And as a result, they believed. And what I want to tell you this morning that the Holy Spirit is saying is that you had a plan you had an expectation but you had that expectation in the wrong place see these people had their focus on the bridegroom they expected him to to fulfill the wine need right they had their focus on the bridegroom they expected for him to make it so they could party the whole weekend at the wedding but that was the wrong bridegroom it was the wrong bridegroom y'all Instead, we're looking at our groom, and I want us to turn our gaze to our present-day situation. Our groom is the Lord Jesus. He said that he did all of this because we are his bride. He performed these miracles. He gave his life. He was resurrected. He paid the price for eternal salvation for us because we are his bride. I don't want to look at the wrong bridegroom. Because when I place my expectation on humans, on those people who were supposed to do what it was that was that I expected, chances are I'm going to be disappointed. Chances are they won't be able to fulfill me 100% of the time in 100% of the ways. People can come through, yes. We sometimes pride ourselves on coming through, yes, we do. But you can't be 100% of everything that I need all the time. How many of you know that some of us need to pick up some of this expectation that we have on people and put it over here where it belongs on God? Didn't we say that last week that our stability is in him? It can't be in people. 
because people are not the firm foundation, but I'm building this house on solid rock because this rock, this rock is my firm foundation. This word of God is my firm foundation. What Jesus has called us into is a firm foundation. And so my expectation can't be on this earthly bridegroom. My expectation has to be on my heavenly bridegroom. Because when I look at Jesus, I can see clearly. When I look at Jesus, I get to know him. When I come face to face with Jesus, I become radiant. I become filled. I become at peace. I get the rest. I get everything I need. But the enemy is out here wreaking havoc, trying to make you think that you can get the answer in a person. That you can get the answer in one good night with that person. That you can get the answer in a bottle or that you can get the answer in your money. Or that maybe the answer is in your job. Or maybe if you just work out five times a week that you'll be able to do it. And you over here trying to drink your water and smooth your edges. Thinking that all of these plans that you have are going to bring you into the thing that God wants to bring you into. And God says you're looking in the wrong places. You're looking in the wrong place. Instead, I have to look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from who? The Lord. That's where my help comes from. So I have my eyes now shifted to Jesus because he is doing the unexpected thing in the expected process. Disrupting the whole thing, y'all. Tearing it up. Putting the beginning at the end and the end of the beginning. We don't even know. Filling the gap with things that we didn't even realize. This is what happens when we come into Jesus' presence. He fills the gap with the things that we didn't know we needed. So these women this past weekend walked out of the Renew Retreat with a gift of being filled with what they didn't even know that they needed. Just like these people in this word, in this scripture, walked out of this wedding and they had exactly what they needed and it came from a completely unexpected place. They had exactly what they needed and not only did they have what they needed, they had the best. Look at what the Bible says in verse 9, chapter 2 of John is where we are. It says, when the head waiter tasted the water after it had become wine, he did not know where it came from. Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, he called the groom and told him, everyone sets out the fine wine first, then after the people are drunk, the inferior. But you have kept the fine wine until now. The fine wine came at the end. The fine wine came after what was expected ran out. See, once you reach the end of yourself, that's when you start encountering God. And once I reach the end of my plan, God says, all right, you done? Can I step in now? Can I can I do this thing that I told you that I was building this this new place for you, this stream in the middle of the desert? He says, can I step in now? Because at the end of your plan, when you reach your wit's end, is usually where you find God, and I don't want to be that anymore. We talked about being spiritually mature women and believers last week. I don't want to have to reach the end of myself to encounter God, so that's why I'm intentionally pursuing him day after day because I don't want to have to get to the end of myself. But these folks got to the end, right? They got to the end of the wine, the old wine, the expected wine. It ran out, but God said, let me just give you this new wine. And today he's giving you a new wine. And guess what? It's not even regular wine. It's not inferior wine. It is the best wine. He saved the best for last. He saved the best for last. And the people, as a result, were amazed that the best wine was saved for last. What's going to happen in your life when you realize the true power of God? What's going to happen in your life when you walk into the full potential of what you have heard God calling you to? What will, ha- what will shift in your life when you fulfill the promises of God and what you expected is not even what you received, but you realize that this entire time Jesus was saving the best for last for you. He was saving the best for last so your best days are yet to come 
Your best days aren't even here yet. The best solutions, the things that you've been praying about, haven't even occurred yet. The best is yet to come. Your latter will be greater than your former. What comes later will be greater than what you left. So as you look back over your life and you think things over, come on, somebody, and you recognize how good God was back then, what I'm telling you this morning is that he's going to be even better tomorrow. He's going to be even better in your future because the best has yet to come. Somebody needs to open your mouth and somebody needs to give God a praise because the best is yet to come. Somebody needs to say that out loud. The best is yet to come. I'm expecting the best wine to come at the end now because I've seen it and I've believed it. He showed you so that you would believe it. He showed you so that you wouldn't have to get to the end of your plan to start believing that you can trust him now, that you don't have to run out of your resources, sis, in order for you to know that God is on your side. He's showing you that you can trust that the best is yet to come. It's happening in your life right now. Everything good is assembling for your favor and for his glory. Yes, I'll say it again. Everything good is assembling for your favor and for his glory. It's not that it's about you being so favored, even though you are, because you are divine a divine priest, right? You are a glorified priest. You are a divine heir with Christ. That's your your true identity. That's what the Bible calls us. The Bible calls us joint heirs with Christ. The Bible says that we are priests. But Jesus said, can you just ask me for more? Because you don't have to reach the end of yourself in order to come into my more. You don't have to run out and be at your wit's end. You don't have to be stopped out on the side of the road. You don't have to be at the brink of divorce in order to ask God for more. You don't have to be at the point of making that bad decision to ask God for more. You don't have to be at the edge of bankruptcy to ask God for more. You don't have to be about to take your own life because the pressure's And the vicissitudes of life have caused you to give up all hope. You don't have to reach the end of your patience with that person over and over and over again. God is saying, stop getting to the end of yourself. Stop waiting until you run out of everything that you need. He said, you're supposed to ask me while you yet have the things that I've given you so that I can step in. He said, move out of the way. Keep me in the center. And as a result, I'm going to do something that is better than what was expected. I'm going to do the unexpected in your life. And when I do this unexpected thing, you will see it. Not only will you see it, but the people you are called to will see it. And as a result, everyone becomes a believer. As a result, that light of God changes everything. As a result, his presence begins to be in that place. As a result, his train starts to fill the temple, literally wrapping you up in his glory so that as you step out, the best things happen to you. As you decide to trust him, the best comes to you. As you lift up his name and decide that I'm going to stick this thing out with God, I'm not going to fall back into the things that I've been using to pacify the pain. I'm not falling back into that relationship. I'm not falling back into that habit. I'm not falling back into that temptation. But instead, I'm going to fall forward. I'm falling forward into his arms. I'm falling forward into his protection. I'm falling forward into his grace and his mercy, which is new for me every single day. As you start to do that, you begin to know And you begin to believe. Why can we trust God? Because when God breathes on a thing, water turns to wine. Why can we trust God? Because when God breathes on a situation, it begins working out better than you expected. Why can we trust God? Because when God breathes this word, the word can't return void, but it must accomplish that thing that he sent it to. So when you ask God and God decides to put his hand on it or to breathe on it or to speak a word over it, it's it's done. It's settled. It's settled. You don't have anything else to worry about. He does what he says he's going to do. 
There's one thing I want you to remember, though, because in John 2 and 5, Mary tells us what we need to do in, a, in this whole thing, okay? Because I've been talking about trusting God. She actually says it, too. She actually says in verse 5, she says to the servants, do whatever he tells you. See, that's, that's the piece that most of us are missing. Because we don't want to do everything he tells us. Not, not all of us want to do everything that he tells us. It's difficult sometimes, even if you want to do everything he tells you, to withstand the temptations. It's difficult. I just want to acknowledge our humanity for a moment. It's difficult to do whatever he tells us. But Mary, the mother of Jesus, gives us the answer, the formula, in order to trigger the positioning of Jesus in our lives to move him from the outskirts and into the center to bring him from a short range view into the long range view. She wants us to know something, a little secret Mary tells us right here. That's not really too much of a secret. She says, do whatever he tells you. I want to do whatever he tells me. I can't do whatever he tells me without his strength, but thanks be unto God who gives me the strength because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. Somebody needs to say that out loud. Speak to yourself this morning. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If I want to see God show up, if I want to see that the best has actually been saved for last, if I don't want to run out of steam and fuel before I get to the end, if I want to finish well, I have to do whatever he tells me to do. I have to, y'all. I have to because it's not just about me. You have to because it's not just about you. There are people positioned in your timeline ahead of where you are right now who are waiting for you. And if you don't show up on time, they're going to miss the light that they were supposed to see that was going to bring them in. It's not just about you. It's about the people who you haven't even met yet. That's why you're here. I'm talking to a specific group of women. I'm not talking to everybody. I'm talking to those who know you were called. Those who love God and who are called according to his purpose, that's not everybody. You're not for everybody. I'm not for everybody. And guess what? That's perfectly fine with me. It's for those who are called. Are you called? Do you love God? And are you called? That's my question. Do you love God? And are you called? Y'all better talk to me this morning. Do you love God? And are you called according to his purpose? Because those are the ones. You the one. You the one, sis. You are the one. So you, what you got to do is what Mary said. You got to do whatever he tells you. When she told the servants that, they did exactly that because Jesus gave an instruction, and the servants did what he said. And as a result, the miracle was facilitated, and it not just blessed the servants because I'm sure they had some, but it blessed everybody in the whole place. Are you willing to be used at that level where you're blessed and not just blessed for yourself, but your blessing overflows and blesses the entire room. Your blessing overflows and it blesses everybody in your life. Are you willing to be used? So you got to do whatever he tells you. You can trust God this morning. You can trust him. Jesus said that he was the bread of life. This is all in John. He gave us seven promises. There's seven promises, and this is why the book of John is so different from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You get to the book of John, and you realize that while Matthew, Mark, and Luke were accounts of Jesus' miracles, John follows the same timeline, but it gives you insight into the relationship with Jesus that these people had, the relationship that Jesus desired. It gives you insight into that. So that right there is what you need. And I'll drop these in our Facebook group and I'll drop them. Maybe we can also drop them here on YouTube. Because Jesus gave us seven promises. He told us, I am. You all know we have our manifestation cards, our affirmation cards. We have our, our affirmation podcast. And it always starts out with an I am because the I am is affirming the truth. He says in John, and I don't even have time to get through it. He says, I am the bread of life. 
I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. I might have to pick this up next week so that we can really dig into this because we got to understand who Jesus said that he was. But we can ask him for more. When I need him, I can call on him. When I don't have the answer, I can ask him. When I don't know, I can reach out to him. And then when I get to know him, I know I can ask because he's qualified to answer my call. When he answers my call, he's giving me the best. He's giving me the best that he has. And the best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. Let's transition into our God says. I'm starting off with the last sentence that I ended on last week because there's always more. There's always more, right? God says, each time you choose me over your own flesh, especially when it's difficult, you become refined. The best wine that was saved for last begins flowing. I want you to want this time with me more than anything else, God says. The deep is what is inside of you. And the deep is where I am taking you. Deep calls unto deep. The best thing about what I have for you is that it couldn't have been anticipated. It will surprise you, God says. He says, yes, I see, I feel, and I am with you. I show you things that you can dare to believe. Then as you believe, it will be done unto you. He says, I have you in the palm of my hand, and I bless you with favor and grace. Good things come to you. Rich things are drawn to you because I can trust you, God says. Ultimately, remember that it is all for the grace and glory of me, he says. Nothing else matters. I have made your feet like hinds feet. And at times you may have forgotten, but remember my love, God says. From a young age I had you. I kept you beyond the hand of the enemy, out of reach. I saved you and protected you and provided for you for such a time as this. I love you, God says. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we just bask in your presence today. God, we thank you for being such a generous and bountiful God towards us. Thank you, God, for loving us the way that you do. God, for caring for us and protecting us. God, thank you for your word, which satisfies the deepest parts of us. God, I pray for my sister right now. And I ask you, God, for a love encounter with you. I ask you, God, that you show her who you are. God, help her to understand and to know and to believe that, yes, even for her, you have saved the best for last. Help her to ask you for more. Help her to believe that when she does, that you come through every single time, like the good, good father that you are. Lord, open the floodgates of heaven. Pour out a blessing on us that we have no room to receive. Thank you, Jesus, for being a God who loves us so deeply, so sincerely. God, thank you for your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God is in this place. God is in this place. And he's called you for more. He's called you for so much more than you have seen. And eyes have not seen. And ears have not heard. Neither has entered into your heart all that he has planned for you because he loves you. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us. Y'all, we gotta go. We got things to do. We got things to do. God is so good. So, 
in closing, you already know we have announcements. It's my birthday month. Every Saturday at 9 a.m., meet me in the Facebook group so that I can give you this free merch so that you can be cute in 2024 as we activate that's our theme for 2024 for our community is activate i will be hosting a private session on december 28th at 7 p.m speaking truths into your life showing you how to create the plan that leaves room for god in 2024 we're gonna make the move We're going to speak the word. You have to register to attend. I have limited space. We'll drop the link in the chat. And Italy is coming. For those who missed Renew Retreat or you haven't been on Renew Retreat, this is going to be the bucket list Renew Retreat. And it's not until 2025. And I've created payment plans that make this payment lower. I want to say it's around maybe $300 a month so that you can come if it's something that you really want to do but only come if the holy spirit is leading you to come only come it doesn't matter if if i go by myself it does not matter to me i'm going and i'll take whoever wants to go with me i just want to thank you for joining me as we beautifully manifest our purpose on purpose by keeping christ in the center because that truly is the best way to show up in life